From amongst the Bani Israel, there was a very pious man, an Abid, who spent 24 7 worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time, there were three brothers. They had one sister. They'd made intentions for jihad to elevate the kalima la ilaha illallah. Now they were in need of somebody, somebody trustworthy, somebody they could trust to leave their sister with. So they chose this priest and they came to this priest and they requested him. He refused. They kept on requesting, he kept on refusing. They kept on pleading till finally he agreed that he would look after their sister. He told them to leave this girl in a house in front of his place of worship. He would remain in his place of worship, worshipping Allah and she would remain inside his house opposite his place of worship. He would leave her food outside his own place of worship and then he would shout her name. She would come out of her house to his place of worship and take her food. And this is how time passed. One day the shaitan whispered, What are you playing at boy? You leave the food outside your place of worship? And she has to come all that way from her house right to your place of worship? What if somebody sees her all alone? And sees that nobody's living with her, they will go to her house and they will rape her. Come on, you'll get more sawab if you leave the food outside her house. Now the shaitan's got him thinking. And he thinks there's more reward in this. Now he takes this food and places it outside her door. And this is how time passes. Every day this is what he's doing. A day comes and the shaitan whispers again. Don't you feel sorry for her? She's all alone. She has nobody to talk to. You are a holy man. You possess a lot of knowledge. Allah has blessed you. You can benefit this girl. Don't talk about the dunya. Talk about the deen. Doesn't this happen? Happens a lot in the universities, don't it? The excuse is that we are talking about the deen. Nothing can happen. We are pure. Listen to this. You can benefit her with your pearls of wisdom. Now, this is what he does. He sits outside his place of worship. And she sits outside his house, at her own house. And they talk from a distance. All about the deen. And this is how time passes. The shaitan whispers again. Come on, what are you doing? Or if somebody sees you talking like this and thinks evil of you, nobody knows from a distance get what you're talking about, whether it's about the deen or the dunya. If they see you talking with a girl, they might get wrong ideas. And then why do you give a taklif to come outside her house? Why don't you just go inside? It's more appropriate this way. Then secondly, nobody can think evil of you. So this is what he does. Now, he started going inside her house. And they would talk about the deen. Slowly, slowly, he's beautifying this girl in his eyes. Till this priest commits sin. And after a period of time, the child is born. Now the child born, he says, What have you done? You can't have this child. What if her brothers come back tomorrow? They will disgrace you and humiliate you. Don't be worried, she won't say anything. Why? Because she doesn't want her brothers to find out either that she's committed the sin. Kill the child. He kills the child. Time passes and the shaitan whispers. Surely you can't trust her. She's got nothing to lose. You're the man with respect. Everybody respects you because you're a saint. You're a holy man. You're known for your piety and your worship. She's got nothing to lose. Now, 
this whisper and he kills this girl and he buries it together with her child and he returns to his place of worship a few days pass and these brothers return they come to the priest and he makes up a story that your sister was a very pious woman and she's passed away they return to their home and that very night the shaitan comes to all three brothers in the dream and he, relate, and he relates the reality of what had happened next morning all three brothers come to the priest and he in turn confesses and relates the truth this is exactly what had happened he's taken to the king and he's sentenced to death he's standing there and the shaitan comes for a final time and he says that I was the one that whispered all this evil and made you commit this evil and I am the one that can save you all you've got to do is renounce the Allah that you believe in that, you have, that, that has created you if you renounce the kalima then I will save you from this punishment he renounces the kalima and becomes a kafir this is where the shaitan as you'd say does a leg now look from the biggest worshipper of his time the biggest worshipper of his time he ends up becoming a kafir 